for the Lord. My soul waits, and in God's word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. Good morning, and welcome to the worship of God for College Hill Presbyterian Church. No matter who you are, no matter where you are on life's journey, you are always welcome here on this beautiful blue sky, sun shining spring day, on this fifth Sunday of Lent, whether you are in the room or part of the great cloud of witnesses in the online congregation, we are delighted to share this service of worship with you. At College Hill Presbyterian Church, we are a people committed to growing together in love of God and neighbor. And we've got lots of ways that we do that. Lots of opportunities to grow in love of God, grow in love of other people, be of some use to the world. You can read about a lot of that in your bulletin and in the e-news, our weekly digest of everything going on. If you're not receiving that in your inbox, email me, we will get you signed up so that you can know what's going on. Um, <clears throat> if this is the fifth Sunday of Lent, Let's just do a little quiz here. If this is the fifth Sunday of Lent, that means that next Sunday is Palm Sunday. And the Sunday after that is Easter. Yes, it is upon us. So do consult your bulletin. We've got a full schedule of Holy Week and Easter activities. Palm Sunday worship, seven days from today. Maundy Thursday worship, 7.30 Thursday night. Good Friday worship at noon here in the sanctuary. Two services on Easter Sunday morning with breakfast in between. You're gonna to wanna to learn about all of that and come to as much of it as you can. We wanna help you have a rich and full Holy Week and Easter experience. Um, speaking of Easter morning, we are looking still for ushers for both Easter services. 
the 8.30 and the 10.30. If you are able and willing to serve but haven't told Judy Steinberg yet, Judy, give a wave. Find her after worship and tell her that you are willing. Uh, please note that the ladies' restroom is open for business. And uh, yes, yes. Uh, re really beautiful work in there and we are so grateful. So be sure to take a look at that. Uh, where's Alex? Yes. Yeah, come on up here. Just come to the lectern. Uh, so Alex Jujan is going to talk to you about a couple of fellowship opportunities while he's making his way here. Karen, we are so grateful for the flowers. They are beautiful. Alex. Right, here. The floor. All right. I'm just piggybacking on some of what Matt already said. There's a lot going on. Really fun stuff for the church at this point in the year. Next week is the first Sunday of the month, and we're having a after service potluck reception uh, every month. Uh, so next week is going to be that public reception. If you are able to bring something, awesome. Thank you for those of you who brought stuff in the past. You can sign up to the sign up sheet that you can write your name down. You can also just bring something and you can email me if you want to let me know ahead of time. Some of you have just been bringing stuff uh, without signing up and that's great. The main thing is just to have something there for everybody to gather around. My email is jujan at gmail.com if you want to let me know. Uh, similarly, we also have the Easter breakfast. Last year we brought it back after a couple years off. It was so much fun to have that breakfast to gather together uh, between services. And we'll do that again in two weeks. And it's a potluck breakfast. So again, just bring something that you'd like to share with everybody. If you want, you can <coughs> fill this out in paper form and sort of state what you'll be bringing. It helps me to figure out uh, if people, some people say they'll bring something and they ask what is it being brought and I can let them know. If you've got paper form, you can also bring, like let me know via email and you can also just bring something today up if you uh, feel like you want to do that. So looking forward to all that stuff. Thank you. Alex, thank you. So, Lots going on, but right now we get to be in the presence of God together. I invite you to give yourself permission to be here and to arrive. Let us move more deeply into worship with this morning's prelude.
Amen. I invite you to rise in body or in spirit. Let us call one another into worship with these words of the psalmist. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits. In God's word is comfort. O Israel, hope in the Lord, with God is steadfast love. Let us pray. Living God, we know that the days are growing short, and soon the time will be fulfilled, and soon we will remember again. 
all your love suffered for our sake and the triumph that you won. As we gather today, let your spirit move among us, intimating life whispering in our ear, asking if these bones can live, trusting your purpose, that we find new life and give glory to you. We ask it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Our God longs for nothing more than to have a people who show the world what God is like, and a lot of the time we fall short of that goal. This morning in mercy and love, God invites us back. Let us join together in our prayer of confession. You are good, O oh God, and you bring forth good, but we have failed you. We have not loved you with all of our heart, soul, strength, and mind. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Forgive us and let our lives bring forth good things. Hear us now as we confess in the silence of our hearts. good news. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. God's mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is the faithfulness of our God, for in Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we are a forgiven people. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated. I invite the children to come meet me on the chancel steps. Good morning, everybody. But wait, very often I ask you to say good morning in a very loud voice. But this week, I'm going to whisper good morning. And I want you to whisper good morning back to me. We're going to try that. Okay? Good morning. Ah, nice. Nice. Now, do you know why? I asked you to whisper because next Sunday we're going to get really loud. I want you to save it for the next seven days. How many of you have been part of Palm Sunday at College Hill Presbyterian Church before? Raise your hands if you've been part of it before. Okay, some have and a lot have not. I want to talk to the people. Let's do this. Um, if you have been part of Palm Sunday, like say last year at College Hill Presbyterian Church, what do we do at the beginning of the service? Who wants to? Okay, well, 
I think we like hold ginormous palms. We, we we hold ginormous palms. I don't know how, I don't know how ginormous they are, but they're palms. We hold palms. What else do we do? Anybody remember? Mom? The kids hold instruments and we walk around the church and and make music. The kids hold instruments and we walk around the church and make noise. Anybody want to add to that? Yeah. I said that. That's okay. You're going to remember. Let me tell you what else we do. And this is where I really need your help. We're actually going to march around the neighborhood to start church. What I need you to do next Sunday is meet me out there and we're gonna have palm branches and we're gonna walk all around the block we're gonna make lots of noise we're gonna make sure nobody on college hill can sleep in next sunday <laughs> why do we do that on palm sunday does anybody know or, yeah uh, hold palm trees. we hold palm that's right and we do it to celebrate Jesus. Because the week before Easter, Jesus rode into Jerusalem and everybody shouted and everybody cheered. And we like to remember that. So I'm asking you right now to meet me back here in seven days. We'll make some noise together for Palm Sunday. Does that sound good? Yeah. Great. We've got the nursery, we've got jam, we've got roots. If you don't know where you're going after we pray, kind of head that way and find your grown up and they will get you pointed in the right direction. But first, let's do a repeat after me prayer. Dear God, Dear God thank, you. thank you. Thank you that Easter is coming. Thank you that we can cheer for Jesus. Thank you that you love us so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much. You can get up and head that way to find out what's happening next. First reading this morning is from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 6 through 11. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading this morning comes from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 1 through 14. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. 
It was full of bones. He led me all around them. They, there were very many lying in the valley. And they were very dry. He said to me, mortal, can these bones live? I answered, oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded. And as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattle, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, Prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me. And the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you and you shall live. And I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Here ends this reading of scripture. May God help us to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Let us pray. Let the good news come now, O God, not only in word, but in power, with the Holy Spirit and full assurance. Through Christ we pray. Amen. I would like to be finished with zombies. But the zombies, it seems, are not finished with us. They just keep coming back. One of my favorite little bits of Pennsylvania trivia. 1968, an appropriately spooky cemetery on a windswept hill in Evans City, about 30 miles north of Pittsburgh. George Romero made a low budget masterpiece, Night of the Living Dead, filmed right there in Western Pennsylvania. Now, Night of the Living Dead was not the first zombie movie. People who study this sort of thing say it goes as far back as uh, White Zombie, which was released in 1932, part of the early Hollywood horror craze. But Romero's Night of the Living Dead established a lot of the conventions that would define the genre going forward. Romero was the first to portray the zombies as this vast horde, this army that just overwhelms people through sheer numerical force. And Romero was the first person to portray hapless, helpless survivors who get thrown together 
but instead of helping one another are selfish and squabble and so get picked off by the zombies one by one. All that stuff that we take for granted in zombie movies starts with George Romero, Night of the Living Dead, 1968, but then the craze would continue. The sequels to Romero's films. The wild popularity of AMC's The Walking Dead, which everybody has stopped watching now, but once upon a time, was all anybody could talk about. World War Z, Shaun of the Living Dead, my personal favorite of the genre. Uh, and even The Last of Us on HBO, which just wrapped up its first season. It's been over 50 years. And every now and then, we let the werewolves or the vampires have a turn, but it seems like we keep coming back to the zombies. Sometimes it seems like the zombies just are not finished with us. So I could try to reach for some relevance this morning. I could pretend that I'm one of those hip, hair gelled, cool pastors and say something like, hey, you like zombie movies? Well, check out Ezekiel in the Valley of Dry Bones. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna do that this morning for two reasons. First, I have never yet been mistaken for a hip hair gel using <laughs> pastor. But also, secondly, this is not a zombie story. This is the opposite of a zombie story. It just looks like a zombie story. This is a story about the prophet Ezekiel. Who is the prophet Ezekiel? Well, if the Bible were a high school yearbook, if they handed out superlatives, Ezekiel would win biggest weirdo, hands down. He is a prophet who lives and works during Israel's Babylonian exile, and he is known for all sorts of extreme actions and bizarre visions. And there's a tradition among our Jewish friends, there was a tradition that you had to be 30 years old before you could even open the book of Ezekiel, because <clears throat> it's weird. And exhibit A, in Ezekiel's weirdness is this well-known story about the Valley of Dry Bones. Ezekiel says, there I was one day and God came along and picked me up and sent me down in a valley full of bones, dry bones, bones that have been there for a long time bleached by the sun, dried out, deader than disco, bones. Fun fact about Ezekiel, he's not only a prophet and a huge weirdo, he is also a priest. The priests of Israel are deeply interested in questions of purity and impurity of clean and unclean. Well, guess what tops the list of unclean things? The very top, the first entry on the list, human remains. Priests do not come into contact with corpses if they can help it. But the Lord God picks up the prophet and puts him down in the midst of all of these dry bones. It seems that Ezekiel has got some business with these bones. Why do the zombies keep coming back? Why do zombies persist in pop culture so it seems like we can never get enough of I have a theory. 
I want to preface this by saying that I am a preacher, not a psychologist. And I want to veer out of my lane this morning. But when I think about zombies, I think about Freud. When I think about zombies, I think about Freud, because Freud believes that you and I function by repressing things. Things like severe anxieties, unpleasant emotions, childhood drama and trauma, desires that make us uncomfortable. You and I get through our day and get through our life by tamping down and burying and ignoring and repressing all of the stuff that we don't want to deal with. That's what Freud believes. But Freud also believes that what is repressed will return. All the stuff we try to squash doesn't stay squashed. All the things we want to bury don't stay buried. And Freud says that when the repressed returns to us, it will come back in an uncanny way. That's the word that he uses, uncanny. It will be familiar, yet strange. It will be familiar, but it will frighten us. Maybe its hair will be disheveled. Maybe it'll have some dirt under its fingernails. Maybe a faint aroma of the grave will cling to it. All the stuff that we don't want to deal with and try to repress, it comes back. It gets up and comes looking for we may want to be done with the zombies, but the zombies are not finished with us. But like I said, this is not a zombie story. This is not a zombie story. Despite its superficial resemblance to the work of George Romero, what is described in Ezekiel 37 is in fact the opposite of a zombie story. Why do I know? What does the Spirit of God say to the prophet? What's the question that drives the story? Can these bones live? Can these bones live? The one thing that zombies cannot do is live. All the movies, all the TV shows are very clear on this point. Zombies are neither alive nor dead. They are undead. In between. Unresolved. That's why they frighten and fascinate us. <coughs> But when the Lord God sets the prophet down in the midst of all of those dry bones, the Lord God says, can these bones live? God's intention is life. That they won't come shambling back to bother us in some in-between undead form, but they will come all the way back. Why would God want to bring all of these bones back to life? So we can deal with them. Straight up. Face to face. Because that's the way we get better. That's the way that we heal. When the things we want to bury come to life so we can look them in the face. So the Lord God sets the prophet down in a valley full of dry bones, and the Lord God says, Mortal, 
Can these bones live? And Ezekiel offers a diplomatic response. Oh Lord, you know. And God tells the prophet to prophesy to the bones. Speak God's word to these bones. Feeling a little silly and maybe more than a little repulse, the prophet starts preaching to the bones. And there is a rattling sound. And the bones come together, bone upon bone. And sinews cover the bones, and flesh covers the sinews. And they stand before the prophet, dry bones, no more. The Lord God speaks again, prophesy to the breath, to the spirit, to the wind. Prophesy to the breath, O prophet. And he does. And the wind fills these bodies and brings them all the way back to life. The things that God's people would have buried. The things God's people did not want to face stand before the prophet now. This is how healing happens. So here is a question that I am quite confident has never before been asked by a preacher at College Hill Presbyterian Church. Are you worried about zombie attacks? Do you lie awake at night and wonder about all the stuff that you've tried to bury? Is it gonna get up and come looking does it haunt your dreams? Does it make you anxious? Are you worried about zombie attacks? Easter is coming. God's intention for us is healing and life. I would ask you to consider that this morning the Lord God sets you down right in the midst of all the stuff you have tried to bury. The Lord God asks you to take a good hard look. The Lord God asks you this, these bones, can they live? Can you face them? Can you let me heal and help you? Can these bones live? God will be waiting for your answer. Amen.
please be seated. Where's Mark? Good. Mark Dawson with a moment permit. <laughs> Saves lives. Um, it, uh, our church has had a long tradition of donating blood twice a year at the time of our rubber sales. Um, such a great tradition. Five or six years ago, someone from the Lord Keeps of came to give us a foundation during church service for our long history of, of our blood donation. So we want to keep that alive, but more importantly, Miller Houston desperately needs blood. They serve all of our local hospitals, which we're very fortunate to have in this area, um, and some of the outlying areas where people are unable to get blood. And they can no longer send their um, blood bills out as regularly, nor do they have as many offsite drives. So they are just really in desperate need of love. So we have, during our run of sale week, we have signed up for two weeks of adopted blood, uh, adopted week blood at the blood bank, at the, their permanent location, uh, Easton, Allentown, Delta And you can call, make an appointment, and go and donate blood. We, we like to keep our reputation alive, but more importantly, we really need to have the blood bank. So the flyer is in the back. Is in your thing. Please take it home. It has all the information for the appointments and where you can uh, where, where you can go, the address and the phone number so you can call. And we hope that you will think seriously about donating. And we have many, many wonderful people who have done it for many years. We truly appreciate them. But we also need to have some young donors to come and start to become our regulars so we can count on all the time. So please think about it and know that when you feel love, you are a focus, saving life, saving a life behind the time. So please. Do that donation if you can possibly do it with your help. It enables you to do so and think about it. And thank you very much. Oh, by the way, our our uh, our uh, code is zero two zero two. So if any call to make a point, you do have to give that number so that council gets better. So thank you. Thank you so much, Barb, and thanks to all of you for giving so generously and uh, literally of uh, yourselves for all these years. Why you now to rise and bow your spirit as Chris Phillips comes to lead us in saying what we believe. Please join me in our affirmation of faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now is the invitation to the offering. God is looking for signs of life. Let us share what we have and be part of God's work in raising the dead.
is healing and life. And we accompany one another into all that God is preparing by praying with and for each other. If you're on Zoom, you can place your prayer request in the chat. I will see it here. If you're in the room, simply slip up a hand after each request. I will say, God, in your mercy, and you are invited to respond. Hear our prayer. People of God, for what do we pray this morning? Yes. Um, I would like to ask for prayers for my extended family on the death of my cousin Cecilia. Um, she had a long battle with cancer, and she leaves behind um, a very disabled son who needs 24 hour care, a husband, and a daughter. And so sorry. Gracious God, we pray for all grieving the death of Cecilia, for all who shared the journey with her and now are left to live life in her absence. May you be a source of comfort and wisdom and peace for grieving hearts. God, in your mercy. Amen. Yes. God, we continue to pray for Don that we still struggle to find the words to pray for her. May your spirit pray through us for her healing and health comfort and peace. God in your mercy. Amen. Yes, Chris. I have a bit of a list this week, um, starting with the, the sad news that my friend Enrico's mother died this week. And uh, families been together and uh, really supporting each other, but just pray for them. Sure. Sure. God, we pray for Enrico's whole family and all those grieving the death of his mother. May your loving hand wipe away every tear. God, in your mercy. That my friend Christy got the very good news that she is now cancer free. Okay. Uh, after her procedure, that was you know, uh, sooner than expected. That was very good news. That's great, Christy. Christy. God, we thank you for the good report about Christy for her being cancer free. May her joy be multiplied and increased. God, in your mercy. Amen. And last but not least, the Dole's house is busier than usual this week because my mom and sister are with us. Excellent. Excellent. God, we thank you for the opportunity to connect. The family come near. May you bless that time deep in the joy. God, in your mercy. Amen. Yes, Yes. 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 So we've been praying for your neighbor Susan and she has passed away. So God, we ask that those who are left behind would know your nearness, would be enfolded by your love, that you would be a comfort. God, in your mercy. Amen. Kathy Pitak asks to continue prayers for her bonus daughter, Lisa. She continues on a very long journey in the hospital to find the correct treatment for her very, very rare disease. She's very thankful, as am I, for all of your support and prayers. God, we continue to pray for Lisa. We ask that you would give those who are caring for her wisdom and skill to guide her into healing. That your spirit would be so near on every step of that journey. God, in your mercy. So Lois Pinto has been asking us to pray for Carmela. She has entered hospice care. So we continue to pray, oh God, Carmela, that your amazing grace would surround her and all who love her. God in your mercy. Also prayers for a friend who's just entered hospice care. Uh, his name is David, he's a college friend. He was diagnosed with glioblastoma back in 2018 and it was a terminal diagnosis at that point. And I want to, in addition to 
asking for prayers for comfort for him and his family. Um, and just give thanks for the grace with which he has pursued the last several years. He continued working as a physician up until very recently and has been sharing his reflections. Um, he's an amazing writer um, and has been sharing his reflections on uh, grief and dying and, and loving um, most recently with a, a podcast with one of the NPR stations in Boston. Um, and so just you know, thankful for um, you know, his influence on so many people um, and prayers for comfort for him and his family. Gracious God, we do pray for David. We are so grateful for the grace and the character that his diagnosis has enabled everyone to see the way that he's been of service to others, for the gift that he has been. God, now as he enters hospice care, may the same love that gave him so many gifts and graces be the love that enfolds and envelops him and all who love him for the time that remains. God, in your mercy. Amen. Requesting prayers for the family of Command Sergeant Major Carl E. Waters, who passed away unexpectedly this week. Carl was an esteemed colleague, fellow paratrooper and jump master of the U.S. Army's 82nd Airborne Division. An outstanding leader, jump master, and human being. Carl was the epitome of the American soldier. This comes from Chris. Gracious God, we pray for all grieving the death of Command Sergeant Major Walters, that you would sustain the weary with a word from you, surround the grieving with your love, and be so very near. God, in your mercy. Yeah, come on. Yes. Absolutely. God, thank you for Lauren, for Emily, for the Faith Formation Committee, for all who, who worked so hard to give us the opportunity to love children and be a place where they can be nurtured into their best selves. Deepen our gratitude for what you are doing here and our commitment to it. God, in your mercy. Yes? Um, we visited Luke's son yesterday, and he seemed to go from one episode to another, and, and he was now in the JFK hospital for the first Oh, wow. <clears throat> Absolutely. God, we continue to pray for Lou's son. All this long journey, may your abiding presence be the one constant source of strength and encouragement, healing, and hope. God, in your mercy. Amen. We'll continue together and lead into the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, debts and debtors. God, we know that you intend life, and yet so often it seems that all around us is death and disease and bad news. So stir up in us this morning the hope for healing and new life that only you can provide. Grant it to those we have named, 
Grant it to those we have not named, but whom we carry in our hearts. Grant it to neighbors who are near to us, the neighbors on the other side of the globe. Grant healing and new life everywhere that it is needed. Give us the courage to seek it for ourselves. We ask all these things, trusting in your love and leaning on the words that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. of something you thought you buried. But it's not a zombie attack. If God brings you to the valley, it's for healing and life. Trust in God's loving purpose for you and go forth to be made whole. And as you go, may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with kindness and give you peace now and always. Amen.
this right here. Thank you.